Right, it's a wet day, the rain's coming down, so I'm doing a job here that's uh, been hanging fire for a bit. Um, I'm going to uh, drill out the end of this uh, pull post um, wrench um, so that I can sweat or bronze braze uh, this nut, which is the right thread. I haven't got a tap, but it's the right thread for the, the bolt I want to use this on. So I'm just going to bronze braze in a nut. Um, so that'll go into there. I've partly uh, bored it out. Uh, I'm just sort of show you while I'm doing this the best way to uh, to do these sort of jobs if you're using a vertical mill slide. Uh, in this case, I can't disassemble this because it's all locked tighted together. Uh, I mean, we're not without heating it up, so I'm just going to centre bore it with a handle on it, and I'm just using the vertical mill slide. So you position your vertical mill slide, put your job in it, get it all centred on both axes. Lock your cross slide, lock your mill slide, and then what a lot of people do is they put their drill or their boring um, cutter in the uh, their end mill, or whatever, in the uh, the collar or the chuck. In this case, it's a fairly easy job, so I've just got it in the chuck. I didn't worry about putting the collar on. Um, and then what people do is they're going to wind the old handle up and they just bore their way through it. It's not really the way you should do it. The problem is that when you advance the carriage up using the, uh, the hand wheel, all the load is actually um, coming from the rack here. Um, and I mean, it's not going to hurt the rack as such, but what will happen is that as you're putting all the pressure, you're actually applying all the force for, from below the centre line, well below the centre line actually. So there is a chance, quite a good chance, that the your slide will can back a little bit and your job will then not be um, square or um, you know perfect. So the best way to do it is very simple. All you do is you just have your uh, your drill in your morse, shove it in your tail stop, get a flat headed bolt, stick that in your chuck, do up the chuck. Oh which way should you go? That way. Doesn't have to be tight. Just about think firm, and that's all. Bring that up behind the, uh, the vertical mill slide, lock it up. What you're going to do is you're just going to use the tail stop ram to advance your carriage, and by doing that, you're advancing uh, the carriage by putting all this all the thrust directly in line with the milling bit or the drill, whatever you're using. No chance of canting. Perfect uh, positioning. And it will also reduce any chance of, of shudder because uh, it will help hold it uh, in position. So we'll fire up the lathe and we'll go in and just take a bit more out of this. Fast, but it's the end of the day and I'm a bit, a bit worn out so I'm just doing a quick and dirty on this one. Uh, give it a bit more. So you can see how the principle works and uh, it's the way to do it. Too fancy. A bit more. 
facing this uh, off after so it doesn't matter if the depth is uh, slightly more than I need. Just a tad. Do your boring, um, that'll be a perfect job. Uh, excellento. So that's exactly how I want to do it. So what I'll do now is I'll take that out and I'll braise between the flats and the, uh, the circumference of the uh, hole I've, I've drilled and then face it off and bingo, instant uh, usable uh, tool post wrench. Easy, you know. Um, so yeah, mill slide, very handy. In this case, I couldn't get this in the pillar drill, otherwise I would have used the pillar drill. Um, but the lathe will actually do a better job because it's more accurate, less chance of flex if you do it this way. In fact, there's virtually no chance of flex whatsoever. So there you go. If you're going to do these sort of jobs, that's the way to do it. Catch you later. <laughs>